couple of guests. Nabil Ramdani is a journalist specialising in the Arab world who's interviewed Colonel Gaddafi and his son Saif al-Islam. She's returned from Trip Tripoli uh, very recently. Also, Hashim Ben Galvan. He was exiled from Libya in 1976 after taking part in student protests. And he now campaigns against Colonel Gaddafi's rule. Thank you both of, both of you for Thank taking you. the time to uh, come and talk to us. I guess a question for each of you to deal with. How... Have you reacted? How concerned are you by what has happened this morning? It appears that the ceasefire never held. Mm. Well, we're hearing very uh, conflicting reports coming out of Libya. Uh, for example, in Benghazi, we've heard that a plane was brought down. Uh, uh, we were not sure initially if it was a, a Gaddafi plane or indeed a plane, a, a rebel plane. It turns out to be a, a, a plane, a, a rebel plane in the end. Yeah. But we're also hearing that in other parts of the country, the ceasefire hasn't been respected, and uh, it's it's worrying indeed. Yeah, and we, we've seen seen some some, uh, some news coming out uh, where the rebel uh, leaders have said, "Don't fire on our our own planes," which suggests that perhaps it was brought down by friendly fire from their side. Mm. Um, what, what have you made of, of, of what's happened today? Uh, what's happened today is uh, typical of, of, of Gaddafi. He says one thing and he does uh, totally the opposite. As, as far as the uh, uh, Libyan foreign uh, minister, uh, Musa Kosa, last night said we comply with the UN resolution, we respect the international, uh, uh, the international uh, community resolution. And in the same time, the tanks was rolling uh, surrounding Benghazi and the... Uh, the, the, the uh, guns were b uh, bombarding the city. And then uh, this morning when I, I think he was asked, you know, last night you, you said you respect the UN resolution, you abide by it, and then this morning he said, that, you know, they've come out with this very strong statement saying it's nothing to do with the international community, don't get involved with, with our affairs. And someone said, what's changed? And he just, he didn't answer the he question. He wouldn't answer. This, right. is, this is typical. Uh, don't believe your eyes, don't believe your uh, ears. Just believe what we tell you. This is Musa Kosa is one of the elements uh, uh, of, the, uh, of the Gaddafi regime that uh, they only understand one language, dictating the, the uh, facts on the ground, dictating even to the, uh, the media what to ask and, and how to approach things. Nabila, I think you wanted to say something. Yes, I think there's as much double speak coming out of the uh, uh, you know, Gaddafi regime as there is uh, coming out of the West and, and indeed the UN coalition. Um, clearly, the UN resolution, there is a, a, a fundamental problem there because it claims that the end, uh, the major aim is to protect civilians and also to end violence. And at the same time, uh, it's precisely the use of violence. Uh, it, 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 it will be using violence against the, the Libyan people. So it will achieve the exact opposite of what the initial aims are. And uh, we are sure to see more bloodshed, uh, an escalation of the conflict, an expansion of uh, the scale of it all, and surely not an immediate end to the conflict. Hashim, do, do you think that... I mean, they've been talking about a no-fly zone for weeks. And do you think now it's all a little bit too late? It is welcomed and to, uh, received by, uh, with jubilation and, and relief. There is no doubt about that, because better late than never. We still can't understand why uh, it took that long, uh, while it was you know, a, a, a demand for, for all Libyans. But now it is uh, in force. It isn't too late. To, to neutralize the Libyan Air Force out of the battle is a big achievement and, and, and giving a chance to the people to, uh, to resume their advances. Uh, and all that. So it is, it, it is a welcome d development, no doubt about that. Nabila, do, do you think that the reason that it's taken so long is that actually the West, the Western leaders, were sitting, waiting and hoping that things would evolve naturally and that the rebels in, in Libya would, would, would win? I would contend that it hasn't taken long enough. I think the process hasn't been thought through at all carefully. I think the uh, UN coalition is embarking itself in something that will be uh, quite uh, extricate, it will be quite difficult to get out of, uh, and that's one of the reasons why President Obama took so long to uh, show his support to uh, essentially uh, a, a French-led, uh, British-led uh, determination to interfere militarily in, in, in Libya. Be precisely because there's a track history there of, you know, our mistakes. And uh, surely America doesn't want to be seen to be intervening in yet another Muslim country. Well, and that's, that's the crux of it, isn't it? As people are saying, it's the case that, that Obama doesn't want to be perceived like George Bush as, as being the world's policeman and, and leading everybody else. He actually wants other countries to come forward, Hashim, and, and take that responsibility, take that, take that role, if you like. 
Yeah, and, and that was achieved. Uh, the United Nations resolution was tabled by Britain, France, and, and Lebanon. And uh, uh, Secretary Clinton was always making the, the, the point that they don't want to lead it, but they want to join it. That has happened. Now the Libyan people are watching what's next. Are they going to implement the United Nations resolution in its uh, full uh, text, or, or are they sitting on, on the fence while Gaddafi is actually committing crimes and genocide on the ground? The one thing uh, that, if I may comment on the, uh, the, the progression of things today, the Libyan regime now embarked on a PR campaign that is well thought. They seem to have a plan now, uh, after 31 days uh, of the crisis. They taken out of the equation, they taken Gaddafi and his sons because they were doing the talking and the threatening and all that. They pulled them out to the background and they introduced civilians like uh, Shukri Ghanem, who was uh, in the patrol, and Musa Kosa, who, 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 and, and Musa Kosa as the foreign secretary and, and, and the others. Yeah, they want to give the impression that there is actually a state. It's not, at first was a family rule. Yeah. It was a regime, yeah. a, a police regime. Now they are giving the impression that there is actually a state with its men. They are putting now two, Which is quite a It's quite a clever tactic in some ways because they're saying that if actually the, the UN is going up against a state rather yeah, than going up against a, clever a dictator. If, clever if anybody believes them, that they don't have that history. Uh, th that bad history. Now they are putting two cards, one the scaremongering of Al-Qaeda and then the cake of the oil uh, on the table, f uh, up for grabs. The cake of the oils are here and businessmen are welcome back to Libya. So they're dangling the carrot and the stick which they became very good at over the past years. I think we could sit, go on it's very quickly. Uh, having said that, uh, the, these two elements, both oil and Al-Qaeda, are realities in Libya. Sure. I don't think we should underestimate the threat that Al-Qaeda represents, not only in and Libya, they've been quiet but in neighboring the, countries. They've been quiet through the whole process, haven't they? Everything that's happened in the Middle East over the last couple of months, we haven't heard very much. Absolutely, and I think you know, what uh, uh, Gaddafi is saying about Al-Qaeda, some people might perceive it as war propaganda, but, you know, let's not forget what you, the U.S. Secretary of State Clinton was saying a couple of days ago. She was saying, who are these rebels? We are working overtime here to try to work out who these people are. So it, it's, a, it's a perceived threat not only by uh, Gaddafi, but also by other countries, including the U.S. We could sit here and talk all afternoon, I know, and it would be fascinating. Uh, we're out of time, but we're very grateful to both of you for taking the time to come in and talk to us. That's Nabia Ramdani, a journalist, and Hashim Ben Galbon. But you may be interested with some news that's just, just coming into us, a, a bit of breaking news from Canada. Um, 